So now on BBC Scotland on one, our British teams have all been knocked out and now someone's putting the boot in. Comedy duo Jonathan Watson and Tony Roper insist it's only an excuse. <laughs> So they finally got their hands on the greatest soccer tournament in the world. But to us British, there is more to football than simply getting it right. And when it comes to the big sporting event, we still know how to put on a show. Hello. Well, we're into week 11 of our quite superb Western Glasgow Indoor Bowls Championship. And don't forget our bowl of the tournament competition, with the chance to win the uh, something to do with bowls. <laughs> and we can see that now. Can we? No, we can't. Well, never mind, because we've now reached the quarter-final stage, and let me tell you, the atmosphere is quite electric as we await the arrival of those first quarter-finalists, Rangers. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, who gives that to us? So, we just a couple of minutes before the action begins, so let's go live by satellite to <laughs> Chick Young in America for the first of his special World Cup reports. Uh, Chick, is the situation out there in the United States as exciting as it is here tonight in Millport? <laughs> yes, Piggy, this is CY in NY, Manhattan to be exact sitting exactly in the spot where the white man stood many moons ago and bought this place from the local Algonquin tribe for a mere $24 worth of trinkets. Surely the worst transfer deal on record, if you forget about Tony Cascarino's move to Celta. And the, how are the people of America taking the fact that Scotland haven't qualified? Totally unbelievable sadness, Dougie. The people are coming up to me in the street and saying, you're Scottish, you're great, we love you, we wish you were here, it's a great pity you're not, we blame Roxburgh, Ferry must go, <laughs> your short bread is superb. Mm. Well, we're having a bit of trouble with our sound link up. And, and I'm just wondering, uh, have you got it yet, Chick? Uh, no, Dougie, uh, but there was this bird in the hotel bar last night. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant the sound link up, Chick. Oh, oh, right. Uh, yes, Doogie, yeah. Uh, hearing you totally loud and clear, even though I'm quite literally 10 million miles away in New York, the city of angels. Hooray for Hollywood. Oh, uh, hold on, Doogie. Yeah. I think it's another one of those earthquakes we've been getting, uh, scoring a quite sensational 8.4 on the Richter scale. <laughs> World Cup USA. The inquest has already begun. No England, no Wales, no Northern Ireland, no Scotland. No good at football. <laughs> Not just a I'm about Scotland. It's in a worse state than our first cup. Well, you know, as you say, I think it's marvellous that Scotland are back in their ancestral home of uh, Hampden Park because, well, you know, as you say, for me it was always a it was a thrill to play here for my country. It was a, a thrill pulling on that dark blue jersey and uh, getting gubbed all over the world. But, uh, you see, as you say, what Scotland needs is a manager, a leader who can fight the nation, uh, a man with a, a bit of charisma, a dot of pizzazz, uh, a colossus to lead us out of the soccer wilderness. And uh, I think we finally got that with Craig. Uh, Craig, uh, <laughs> Craig thing, man. The game in England is much the same as it is in Scotland, only better. Um, I like to think that the Scottish have something to do with that. I think that people like me, George Graham, and uh, him at Man United, have <laughs> a bit of personality to the game. Je m'adresse au football écossais. Je regarde les incidents à Colbaoui et Celtic. Lorsque les fans attaquent les footballeurs, euh, c'est très mal. Euh, 
pas bon parce que ce n'est pas vrai de football, c'est le même truc que les autres footballeurs. Je suis très heureux que c'était tant que Ferguson. After all, in the past, we have done magnificent and qualifying, but if you look at England, well, they are vastly the same as us, so currently, generally, in general, British football is in an abdominal state. No mistake. An abominable state. What do you think when you hear AC Milan have set to offer 10 million pounds for you? Well, uh, obviously, uh, I'm very flattered that uh, Mr. Milan thinks I'm worth it. <laughs> To be honest, uh, the current problem is that uh, 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 totally unacceptable uh, to a club of Tottenham side. Um, I mean, we were in a country that now, uh, you know, a lot of fans to stomach, and um, the failure of British team to qualify for World Cup uh, make them to talk about uh, putting the English, uh, the Irish, uh, the Welsh, and the Scottish into one team. Um, I but I think it's a good idea. Um, after all, it was for Jack Charlton. Oh, well, right enough, it would have meant leaving Ray Rovers. I did want the Northern Ireland job, but at the end of the day, it came down to money. And the Northern Ireland FA wouldn't budge. Well, exactly. And I couldn't afford to offer them any more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes me laugh. The Scottish fans are always quick to say the SFA never considers them. But why aren't they thanking us now for all the money we've saved them by not qualifying? But that doesn't necessarily mean we won't be represented. I don't know if you can see us, but the taxis are yellow. And that's, well, I think that's really nice, that, because, uh, well, I have a taxi myself uh, back home in Glasgow. You may have seen it. It's a black one. How could they come here with a supporters club? You know, I came by my own accordion to support my country, Holland. So, uh, what part of Holland do you come from? Black Hall. I'm going to put it. Yeah. Well, I think I'll support Morocco, because I quite like getting Moroccans. I love World Cups. I remember 1982 when Italy won it, 1970 when Brazil won it, 1966 when West Germany lost it. <laughs> By the way, did you see that documentary about Graham Taylor? I was shocked. I thought his language was f disgraceful. <laughs> of course, I was deeply upset by England's failure to qualify. <laughs> When Ronald Coleman bent that free kick into the England net, I just jumped up and roared with disappointment, so I did. They think it's all over. Bloody right it is. <laughs> So, uh, no English fans to be called British fans at the first hint of trouble. And no Gascoigne either. Mind you, he has got a broken leg. Terrible tackle, that. Uh, I bet you Gaza now wishes he'd never made it. <laughs> Even here, however, thoughts of Scotland and domestic doings are never far away. Right. Uh, would you like to say it for Sally? Okay, let me know when you do, right? Uh, Glasgow is a 100%, 24 hours a day footballing city, so uh, it's kind of nice to get away to the relative peace and quiet of New York, yeah? I can't, the man. Nice to meet the two of you. Yeah. Right. So these are the three announcements. One, canvas slang is a reality. Two, there will no longer be a Celtic board. There will be two Celtic boards. And three, is the immediate move to raise between four and six million pounds to strengthen the financial position of the club. The formation by the pact of a new pressure group sells for any loose change. What we have today is a situation of we do not know why, because of we do not know why, for the purpose of you're not quite sure. By means of who knows whether in the realms of where, when, and why. Hello, Lou. Yes, Lou. Well, Lou, uh, any problems here, Lou? And uh, before we go, uh, 
another poor season. And for me, this is all down to a, a genuine lack of quality players of quality. Well, uh, in fairness, Davey, I know money is required for new players. But I will say that these I have here are very adaptable. They can be just as ineffective in a number of positions. <laughs> but in fairness, there are players at Celtic Park who I know have the club at heart. Uh, Peter Grant, he's a Celtic man through and through. And this is something I discussed with him when he was signing his last hour-to-hour -hour contract. <laughs> yeah, top-class players are good investment. Rangers, for example, have spent four million pounds on Duncan Ferguson. He's already started to pay that back. Mostly in fines. That'd make me sad. <laughs> Last season's unrest was totally unacceptable for, for Robert Celtic. I'll never forget the New Year game. At the height of the troubles. I could only watch in horror as a Mars bar was thrown at the director's box. Actually, it was just after that I got injured myself. I was trampled in a crush as Derek Johnson tried to grab the Mars bar. Hello, Donald. Yes, Donald. Well, Donald. Vandalism in any shape or form cannot be condoned. But there are those who feel that what Rangers did to combat this was not so much anti-vandal as simply anti-Celtic. I will admit it is a pity that in order to punish the guilty, we have to take it out on all of the Protestantly challenged. But, baby, you invite someone to your house and they destroy it. You don't invite them back. Absolutely. And if you invite someone to your house and then nut them, you can be keeping a very orderly house. No, but, but, then, uh, but moving on, Donald, uh, I think you'll possibly be the first to admit it's been a scandalous year for the club. Well, this is true. We've had our alleged problems splashed all over the newspapers, but we're not taking this lying down. Writs have been served and we plan to sue for slander. The journalists who expose stories about the players? The historian who claimed King Billy was gay. <laughs> now more than ever, the fans too have their say. Look, the man is a com... Hold on, hold on. Just a minute, just a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you at the game today? Oh, wasn't he the game today? Hello, caller. Oh, yes, caller. Well, caller, uh, that is a quality question, caller. Uh... Look, I'm entitled to my opinion. Well, fair dues. It's all about opinions, and you're entitled to yours, even if it's rubbish. Well, you had to get today. Aye, but just oh, with respect, no, no, no. shut up. I just call it as I see it through blue-tinted spectacles. It's obvious. Which side of the divide you come from? Yeah, what did I tell you? I categorically deny that it's a falsehood. I challenge you to write in. I will meet you on this program. I deny categorically that I was jumping up and down like a maddie at my son's football match. <laughs> Are you at the game today? Failure is simply football's way of telling you you're rubbish. And the future now rests with Venables, Hamilton, Smith and Brown. But are we heading for obscurity or a bright new dawn of mediocrity? <laughs> Maybe this disunited soccer kingdom can learn from each other's mistakes by taking this opportunity to dissect the grand delusion that is Scottish football. Well, of course, this is no ordinary game. This is, in fact, a very special game because what's at stake is absolutely nothing. So, Scotland must be in with a chance. Craig Brown, El Supremo. Any thoughts, Craig, on what we might expect? Oh, uh, well, Chick, this is the time for trying new things. It's the time for experimenting, and I'm looking forward to seeing Colin Henry on the pitch. He certainly looks like an experiment. You're talking well, huh? for the time being at least. It's now time to savour the feast of football set before us. Eh, uh, can I see your ticket, please? <laughs> Sorry? A ticket? Look, me. I don't need a ticket. I'm here to do a report. <sighs> I'm sorry, Paul. No ticket, no admittance. <laughs> Hold on a minute. I've got accreditation. Uh, but you need a ticket. No, you don't. Look, listen. Hey, come on, Paul. Off you go. Come on. <laughs> Hold on a minute. <laughs> Gonna let this over, mister. <laughs> <laughs> and Hamden Park, Davey, I have to say, looking quite magnificent. Officially, this might be a friendly, but there's unquestionably no question of Holland not taking this match seriously. The Dutch know all about Craig Brown's managerial pedigree. 
They've spent the day studying the videotapes of Clyde in the 1980s. One can almost feel the sense of optimism quite literally oozing around us, and uh, Davy, I might be tempting fate, but I take Scotland to win tonight, win tonight, to win tonight. Just not good enough. Maybe Proven, I put it to you that the simple fact is we are just not good enough and certain players just don't try for Scotland. Hello, Archie. Yes, Archie. Well, Archie, uh, any players uh, you particularly have in mind? Well, not really. Uh, McStay, Boyd, Collins. <laughs> don't forget, it was only a friendly. Nobody was really that bothered. But it's not all doom and gloom. I thought Ur Craig was quite superb throughout the 90 minutes. And if anyone slags him off, it'll be me and them square go, OK? <laughs> we need true 100% pedigree Scots, like, well, off the top of my head, the, the magnificent figure of well, the majestic presence of the eye-ready captain of the glorious Glasgow Rangers, Richard Goff. Well, no doubt about it, Archie. Uh, Richard Goff is a quality player. Quality player? Uh, Davy, the man is a god. <laughs> Craig, gubbed, humped, slabbered, skelped. Does this sort of constructive criticism help? Well, well Chick, what was most pleasing was the manner of our gubbing act. I felt we were gubbed with flair. <laughs> Be fair, Craig. Uh, you've never really had a settled side, have you? Uh, well, that, that's true, Chick. We, we've had tremendous problems to contend with. For example, in the period since I took over, we've had 57 call-offs. Unbelievable. Yeah, and not one of them was Brian Irvin. <laughs> hey, the fans would like to know by wanting me to ask, uh, Richard Goff, give him a game. <laughs> like... We must look ahead. And the SFA are already ignoring the World Cup and have come up with some revolutionary ideas that we feel will revolutionize our game. Pitches are a problem. Some of them have just too much grass. So we've been looking at a new synthetic substance. Astromud. <laughs> now, this will enable players to play in the right sort of conditions, even in summer. And we've been in discussion with Craig Johnson, who, if you remember, has invented the Predator football boot using rubber. Well, Craig has designed a prototype for Scottish football, which we also hope to introduce. <laughs> <laughs> But are we the right people to examine our own navels? You just made the best possible start to match day by joining us on Extra Wine. <laughs> Coming up later, Ken McRobb and his amazing technical race coat, plus the best racing tips from Scotland's top tipster, Davy Cooper. But first, Paul Cooney with all the latest football headlines. Paul. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Paul Cooney here with all the latest football headlines for all you football fans and the way to your matches carrying a portable television set. The SFA are to launch a probe into a recent proposal to exhume the bodies of 24 nuns from a disused graveyard in Edinburgh. They say this is not permissible, no matter how desperate Hibs are for supporters. Jim. Well, Jerry, that's Paul done the wee diddy stories. Still to come on Extra Wine, Tommy Burns doing well for a Tim. <laughs> While Jerry has been taking the roads and miles to Bonnie Dundee for a laid-back chat with Mr. Cool himself, the Perry Comatose of Scottish football, Ivan Golak. And the first thing they talked about was Dundee United's victory over Rangers in the Scottish Cup final. But we've edited all that out. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying, though, but, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what is a question, you know, because answer is always the same one. Incomprehensible. <laughs> right, aprons off, and let's get down to what extra brain is all about. Slabbering over Rangers. Walter, recently excel, and let's not forget it, Tommy Burns, said Scottish football could end up like the Irish League. I mean, 
What a cheeky bism. Air water. <laughs> Enemy water. What about Big Mark? He buys a new jacket. He buys a copy of The Big Issue. His dad visits him. And he eats pasta. Just some of the big important stories that have been featured <laughs> this year in the official Rangers magazine, The Daily Record. <laughs> big question is, Walter. Big Mark. He's brilliant, isn't he? Mark's <laughs> oh, Mark's a particularly good season. He's been scoring goals as fast as the Scots book counters can miss them. I was speaking to Coy's the other day, and what a character. <laughs> By the way, Walter, why was Andy Gorham dressed as Broxy Bear at the last Old Firm game of the season? Because it's the only thing that we've got that fits him. <laughs> anyway, Walter, yet another great season with the promise of more to come. I have to say, Walter, thanks to you, it really is great being a proddy. But is non-qualification any reason not to have a Scott Sport Extra Wine World Cup junket? <laughs> so, Jerry, what do you think about the crisis facing Scottish football? What? The sport in question got another series. Good sarcastic point, Jerry. <laughs> of course, all true Scots are desperate to play in the World Cup finals. So much so that two of them, Owen Coyle and Tommy Coyne, are pretending to be Irish. And a third, Les Mottram, is pretending to be a referee. <laughs> Big Jack Charlton, well, my old mucker, Big Jack. Well, Big Jack is simply operated within the rules. Um, for example, take the boy Coyne Coyne. Uh, it's Tom Coyne and Ernie Coyne, or whatever the name is. Uh, well, I mean, what's the problem? I mean, they were born on Irish soil. I suppose, though, technically speaking, uh, Code Bridge is in Scotland. <laughs> well, Jerry, 76,000 Old Cedar Stadium, free parking for over 10,000 cars. Not bad, eh? Yeah, it's incredibly not bad. What the name? Giant Stadium. It's like the other venues here, and I'm thinking particularly of the Pontiac Silverdome, the Rose Bowl, RFK Stadium. These names just don't say football. They just don't have the magic of names like Boghead, Oakleview, Glebe Park, Clifton Hill. Good shade, Jay. <laughs> World Cup USA. World Cup useless, I say, because, I mean, apart from the millions being pumped into the game and the, the billions of people who, you know, who will watch it on the telly and... Uh, the thousands of kids who'll take up the game because of it, uh, I can't think of one single benefit. I, I'm, I mean, it's one single benefit in having the finals been held here in uh, the American States of United. I'll tell you one thing about the Americans, Jay. They really know how to put on a show. Yes, indeed they do. In fact, I was, in fact, at the live coverage of the draw back in December, and all the great soccer names were there. Franz Beckenbauer, the Kaiser, Eusebio, the Black Panther, Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock, <laughs> David Hasselhoff, that's the big diddy out of Baywatch. And of course, Mickey Mouse was there too. So the SFA was represented. Well, the Irish are going to need the luck of the Welsh if they're going to qualify for the living stages, but uh, let's take a look at the opposition they're up against. Um, now, the Italians. Now, well, the Italians are just very fortunate because, because they happen to play in Italy. Uh, if the Italians were Albanians, uh, playing in Albany, then uh, they wouldn't be so good. And if Holland don't win World Cup USA, who do you think will? Scotland. <laughs> Scotland haven't qualified. Aye, but that's when Scotland are at their most dangerous. <laughs> Everybody's ripping them off. Mexico. Well, my old mate Pelle, he predicted that within the next 2,000 years, an African nation would win the World Cup. <laughs> Mexico could be that nation. <laughs> so this is the famous Central Park. Looks like it. So where exactly do Cowan be actually play, Jerry? Do you have a work permit? A visa? A passport? No, I see the bloke. The bloke that is hiding me in the oil drum in the way in. I mean, right? He said I didn't need any of them. So, you're an illegal alien? I know. <laughs> I'm a sell it man. Thank you. Ask not what my country can do for me, 
ask, what can I do for my country? To improve the standards of football, because let's forget about not qualifying for this, this sham, right? And let's concentrate on uh, the Eurovision Championships, where once again, we're gonna be, well, we're gonna be in amongst the big boys. Uh, the Faraway Islands, uh, the mighty Finland, and, uh, well, my, my old pal from my days back in Torino, uh, we Sandy Marino. Big old Jenny? No. Can I get one? No. You won't eat your dinner. I will eat my dinner. No, you're not getting one. Uh, look, you're not my dad, Jerry. No, but I am chief sports editor. Big worry, Jerry. <laughs> And finally, Jerry, I have to ask you, because we've got 30 seconds to kill, World Cup USA, who do you fancy to win it? Well, I go for Brazil. Brazil? So, Jerry, you're going for the yellow cow and beefs? <laughs> yes. But before we go, on behalf of all of us on Scott Sport Extra Wine, we'd like to say good luck and best wishes to the Republic of Ireland. Sure, Jerry. <laughs> A man was arrested today trying to steal lead from the roof of St. Patrick's Cathedral. The man, who described himself as a true blue Scots Dutchman, was later named as Boyne Schoenberg Syme from Lark Hall. <laughs> At the prisoner's request, he was charged under his adopted Lakota Sioux name of Dances with Flutes. <laughs> Meanwhile, police have set up roadblocks in the Lower East Side in an attempt to stop a yellow cab driver who has apparently gone berserk, driving on the wrong side of the road, shouting at other drivers, and completely ignoring traffic signals. The driver has also been picking up unsuspecting passengers, then boring them to death with his stories. Police who have issued this photo say the man is dangerous and should not be approached. A beautiful game has been sacrificed on an altar of dash. And this is the Temple of Doom. <laughs> Welcome to Soccer Babylon. I would like to play in World Cup because uh, being Dutch, uh, I'm eligible to play for Holland. <laughs> Who scored the glorious little goal for Rangers? A World Cup prediction. A World Cup prediction. Right, no, listen, no. I'll give you a prediction, man. Right? I'll even put money on it. And it's this. In the World Cup final, man. Right? Whoever the teams are, right? Whoever's playing, in the final, 20 seconds after the kickoff, the commentators will be talking about England. <laughs> <laughs>